just a minute ago, you mentioned uh, suicide, and I was trying to, and I wondered about the conversation with Alan Vega when it came time to ask Alan if he could do a if he could do a Christmas song. Well, it was it was fine because you have to understand I was their record company, and it's not like they had a lot happening. Right that much right and I was also Alan's solo artist so therefore there are two records there's an Alan Vega one and there's a suicide one because um it I mean he was totally up for it they it it was a fun thing to do in a very very hot summer in New York right but it was hard I had to I had to constantly call them up and say, you know, where are you with your record? And I want to hear it because I always heard everything before we recorded them. Right. It was, they all liked the idea. They really did. They were all happy to do it because it was making another record. I probably gave them, you know, a few thousand dollars advance each, not a lot, but it's still something. Right because none of them were huge successes yet. I do know that the Waitresses record, um, Jerry Jaffe, who had signed them, who wanted to sign them to Polydor, I said, you know, well, they're making this Christmas record. And um, he said, oh, sure, you know, thinking, big deal. And then when it came out, he said, why didn't you tell me what this was? And I said, well, I told you. So he was surprised because it was such a such a standard, really. Right. Yeah. So, um, but it, it was just, I can't, it's hard to express the sense of possibility that there was in music in 19, from 1980 to 1983, or four at my label. Everything seemed possible. It was all fun. You know, driving the bus because you were going to do some gigs with Kid Creole in Paris and you flew to Brussels because it cost less. And I would drive the bus. That was fun. You know, it was all, it was like a co-op. It, it really was a repertory company and it had that sense of solidarity. Right. So, let's go ahead and check. I actually I have to tell you, I interviewed. Uh, I've interviewed both Chris Butler and Mars Williams uh, from Waitresses, right. uh, both yes. about this separately. And, and Chris was saying that, you know, when you asked, it was like, okay, I'm in, but it wasn't. It wasn't an idea that seemed automatically a good idea to him. Did you have it? Did you when you heard it? Did you have a sense this could this had potentially longer legs than other tracks on the record? I thought it was fabulous. I actually, I actually thought things fall apart was um, sonically was the most interesting record. I you know, I loved every track. There wasn't one track I didn't love, and I loved them all for different reasons. And um, but. I didn't know that Christmas rapping would become a standard because right. it's an odd record. I didn't know that it could be covered because I didn't think Patty, Patty's vocal could be bettered. Right. And yet, you know, the Spice Girls could make a really great version. And I heard another version that came out just recently. Um, there's this record show called Sophisticated Boom Boom on um, WFMU that's my favorite record show and on their Christmas um, special this year they played a new version and um, so I can't quite remember who's in it but it was really great so I didn't realize it could be covered in that way The 12 Songs of Christmas podcast is available from Apple, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher and Pandora Follow 12 Songs for new episodes weekly you can also find us online at 12songsofchristmas.com and on Facebook at 12songsofchristmas as well.